thank you, Paul. It's great to follow Paul and Centre for Cities because I think Centre for Cities are doing great work in this in this area and have pointed out to me the particular challenge that Bristol has. Um, we're the only city outside what I call the broader northeast, uh, uh, broader, the broader um, southeast um, area that uh, that is in the top ten of the in the affordability ratio. And we're a relatively rich city. But we've got people going to food banks. We've got people living in some of the poorest um, suburbs of, in, in this country. Um, and so we are an unaffordable city to so many people, not just in housing, but particularly in housing. And um, so I think that's the biggest challenge I've got. And it was so good to hear Paul saying, what we need to do is not just build more housing, affordable housing, rentable housing, housing to, to buy, but we've just got to build more homes. And I like to get on, now having said housing rather a lot, which always sounds to me like a product, I would like to get on to um, talking about homes, places, communities, and sustainable forms of living. And when I say sustainable, I mean the sort of places that people want to carry on living in. To my mind as an architect, it's vitally important that we don't just chase, chase the numbers. The numbers are important, but on their own, it, they're, they're a big trap. And I think an awful lot of the political holes that we've got into in the past has been about chasing numbers, whether it be for homes or anything else. And so, yes, it's important, but let's, let's think about the sort of places that we want to create. Bristol, and it was up there, has got 5,346, probably 5,345 by now, um, uncompleted planning permissions for new homes. Um, they've been stalled. We're only building 150 affordable homes this year. We're only building a total of 1,600 homes this year. A, we should double that total per year, and we should bring up the affordable ratio to at least 1,000 a year. That's not enough. But to do that, we, we can't just change the direction. We've got to make a step change. So I think the big challenge is how do we make that step change. I've got a think tank together um, that is now looking, of, of all the housing providers, looking at how we can make that step change. And I think it needs to be a partnership between the city, the government, the banks, and, and um, the homes providers. And when I say the, the homes providers, I mean not just the volume house builders, not just the housing associations, but looking at co-ownership, looking at self-build, looking at every little gap in the market that we can fill. So I think we've got to be really imaginative. We've got to make quite sure that we don't produce those monocultures that have expanded to the north of Bristol, which I regard as unsustainable in terms of being places to live and work and, and, um, and play. Um, they're places where you almost inevitably have to jump into your car to do anything. And that is not sustainable by any um, stretch of the imagination. So um, we've got a challenge. I think we've got a challenge that is based in planning law. Why do we allow people to sit on planning permission for such a long time. Let's give a limit to the length of time that people can sit on planning permissions. Let's stop people being able to renew planning permissions just by right. It's got to be, they've got to earn it, and I believe it should be connected to an ability to start within quite a short time scale. And so there's a challenge to the industry. If you get planning permission, Bloody well build it, because otherwise you're letting us all down. And I think the planning just used in order to raise the value of sites is not helpful to anybody. <coughs> so um, that's, that is 
a big challenge. The other big challenge in a city like Bristol, and it's really good to hear Paul saying Bristol is defined as being Bristol and South Gloucestershire, because South Gloucestershire actually contains at least 25% of Bristol in terms of its built up area. And we need to think much more radically about how we work together between Bristol and South Gloucestershire um, and, and move much more towards combining our services. Um, I will step back from saying being a complete combined authority because I think there are some, probably some political um, uh, difficulties in the way of that at the moment. But nevertheless, I think we should work very closely together as a combined area that defines Bristol in the public mind. Where are you, if you live in uh, Chipping something or, or, or um, somewhere Sodbury, um, <laughs> you, when you're in abroad, you don't say you live in Chipping Sodbury, you say that you live in, um, you, you live in Bristol. And I think it is Bristol that is the engine for growth in this area, it is the cultural centre of this area, and um, Bath has the role to play in that one. And, um, but we are the main course there, they're the dessert. And, um, and I think it's really important that we think holistically about it. Another great, um, and, and so, part of Bristol's um, home solution does lie in South Gloucestershire and in our surrounding authorities, but I don't want to spread um, homes all over the green belt. I think the other big um, issue that we have to deal with is land supply. Um, we are putting together as much as we can all the public land in Bristol and possibly in the surrounding authorities into a single pot. Not into a single ownership, but into a single management pot. And the idea of that is that we can look at the way we can bring land together to make 2 plus 2 equal 5 or even 7. Um, the way we might swap land um, between different um, public ownerships to make more sense of it. I can think of a, uh, a, an example at the moment where Bristol is swapping a bit of land with the HCA so that we can build a school on their land and they can build um, homes on, on, uh, on our land. Um, and so uh, I think a much more creative way of looking at the way we use our resources, the way we use our old buildings. Um, there are, um, I was uh, in my past um, architectural practice, I'm now a retired architect, um, because I have a slightly bigger project. Um, uh, we, we recently completed Lakeshore in South Bristol, the conversion of the shell of a listed 1970s headquarters building for Imperial turned into 300 or so really fantastic homes um, set in Hartcliffe. Um, not, um, you would thought, not every estate agent's dream in terms of sales pitch that it's set in Hartcliffe. But you go there and it's fantastic. And, um, and I think that it will help the regeneration of South Bristol. So we shouldn't just be looking at homes about homes being a new place for people to live, but homes contributing um, together with all that they bring to a better transport system and the regeneration of areas that, that need regeneration. So um, I think that to make all this work, we need strong leadership. And Milton Keynes was mentioned by Paul. Milton Keynes, incidentally, I think, if I, if I, I think I'm right, is the only place outside London that is able to, um, to have direct responsibility and control of the funding that would otherwise come through the HCA. And I'm asking government that Bristol, London has a mayor, Bristol has a mayor, we need equal treatment, give us the money. Because if localism means anything, it is trusting us to get on with it. And if you look at the way European cities work, they generally have much more control of their own resources and are able to get on with it. And successful mayors in Bordeaux and elsewhere have been able to demonstrate the enormous advantages of that local control. Britain is the most centrally controlled 
um, country in Europe in terms of its resources. We're always having to ask for handouts. I want to stop that culture of going to government and asking for handouts. I want to say, let us try things out, in Bristol in particular, with the only core city with um, independent leadership, with the only core city that doesn't have Labour Party leadership. And I share a lot of the values of the Labour Party, which may surprise people. But I don't share the controlling nature that comes from a culture of party politics that is more attuned to Westminster than it is to the to the um, government of city, the governance of cities. So give us the chance to make our own mistakes, and I believe then we can act as a test bed for government and a test bed for other cities to show how we can really change the scene in Bristol and make a step change. Because to come back to the numbers and the affordability. Unless Bristol, which is a growth area, which is, act, which is relatively healthy compared to many other areas in the, in the country, and is the high, has the highest GDP of any of the core cities in this country, um, I, we have to meet that with the ability to house the people decently in, and um, for people to bring up their families in a way that inspires the young people rather than depresses them. And um, so I'm up for it. I hope you're all up for it. I hope that um, we will be able to get um, an enormous amount of energy coming out of the city, as well as welcoming people to come into the city to help us with a task that I think is a tremendous opportunity, even in a time of, of receiving resources. And I have my budget meeting this afternoon and I'll be looking an even happier man if I get through that. So thank you very much. <laughs>